Hello there, my fellow mushroom eaters, and welcome back to another Warhammer Fantasy lore video. Taking a break from the Black Orcs and the Hobgoblins for a bit, today I wanted to bring to you a topic which many of you, I think, were looking forward to. That is essentially because these creatures are a staple of greenskin society in both 40k and fantasy. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the squigs. Today we're gonna see how these work in their fantasy variants, and how they are used as war beasts, pets, and more. I'm your host, the squig herding narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Without a doubt, the squig is one of the most peculiar creatures you will ever find in the world of Warhammer Fantasy. While most living creatures can be classified as belonging to either the animal, the plant, or the fungal realms, the squig seems to belong equally to all of them, since these strange creatures are part fungoid and part meat. Squigs appear to be very simple about their motivation. They either eat anything edible nearby, and then move on randomly until they find something else to eat, or they simply wander around aimlessly. They generally live in a cave, where the wet and exotic mushrooms that grow in the tunnels of the night goblins attract them like flies to honey. Generally omnivorous, a cave squig comes from very far away to feed on these mushrooms, and that is when the night goblins will hunt them down. The night goblins hunt the cave squig for many different reasons. For their resistant skin, for their meat, or because they can be trained into becoming pets or guard animals. Those who have tried squig meat say it is quite fluffy and tasty, with the taste of smoked ham but the lightness of chicken. Your average squig is a creature with a spherical body, small, round, shiny eyes, and a huge mouth dominated by rows and rows of dagger-sharp fangs, and their sturdy round bodies move forward on two clawed legs. However, squigs can come in many sizes, colors, and shapes, which has led some scholars to believe that they are creatures of chaos. Like the mushrooms that grow inside the caves of the night goblins, squigs tend to have bright colors. Stories have been heard about leafy squigs roaming the perpetual darkness of the older forests, as well as spitting squigs plaguing the rivers running down from the mountains. Although they always prefer areas without lighting, they seem to be able to adapt to any environment they live in. A human, unlucky enough to encounter a squig, often sees one of the variations of the cave squig used by the night goblins. Cave squigs move by propelling themselves in great leaps with their powerful legs, and then leaping back as soon as they hit the ground like a bouncing ball. This movement has no discernible pattern, and they will keep bouncing around randomly until they find some food. Although, as said, they come in many sizes, there are at least a couple of orders of magnitude size-wise. And after the average cave squig is the great cave squig. The fangs of these creatures are as sharp as swords, and their ravenous appetite means that they will snap at anything moving in front of them. Their hides are tough and leathery, and their small eyes gleam with an endless desire for meat and carnage. As one might expect, these powerful squigs are greatly prized by many night goblin tribes. However, due to their rarity and vicious behavior, they are not very common on the battlefield. As the great cave squigs are dangerous to capture, to ride one of these in battle is considered a great achievement even for the toughest of night goblins. The process of breaking in a great cave squig will cost the lives of many goblins, but once the beast learns to accept a rider, they will serve as a stable mount, more than the smaller and unruly cave squig. This, in turn, allows a rider a free hand to fight in melee combat instead of just hanging for dear life. When grouped with squig hoppers, which we're gonna get to in a moment, a great cave squig will always be the one who leads the pack. Although very expensive to maintain, eating twice their own body weight daily, a night goblin war boss will do almost anything to keep such a prize creature in the hands of the tribe. On the very rare occasion when a great cave squig continues growing exponentially, 
they will grow to such a gigantic size that they are once again categorized into another, even bigger variant known as the Colossal Squig. In sense to be out of their protective holes, the squigs become even more angry and ferocious when out in the open. To ensure that their round bodies waddle in the correct direction, the night goblins employ probbers, pitchforks, gongs, or skirtle barkers. This array of stabs, bright lights, and clanging keeps the squig moving in the proper direction, but also tends to keep them away from their handlers and to make them angry. With their iron-breaking bite, a cave squig can do a lot of damage. And after all that irritating poking, they are more than ready to do that. When all goes well, a night goblin squig herd can chop into almost any opposition. When it goes wrong, as in all the goblin herders are killed, the remaining cave squigs quickly disperse and turn on their allies. Driven mad by the noise and prodding, the cave squigs are eager to scatter in all directions, snapping at anything that gets in the way, including other squigs. The night goblins though, being as crazy as they are, don't seem to mind this risk. After all, as long as somebody else gets bitten, they don't care one bit. Most other greenskins claim that living underground for so long has driven the night goblins mad, and that is probably true. One thing is for certain though, only the most unhinged of their kind will try to catch a great cave squig, and only the absolute maniacs among their kind will chain together two great cave squigs and then prod them towards the enemy. Known as the Mangler Squigs, or occasionally the Chain Squigs, or Great Squig Knockers, these balls of destruction can tear apart a battle line with brutal savagery. Alternatively pulling, yanking, or dragging each other along, the two fettered Great Squigs will hurtle onward. There is a token attempt by the Night Goblins to steer the Mangler Squigs by chaining a few foolish volunteers directly onto the ferocious monsters. This crew, if you can call them that, preserves some notion of goading the rolling monstrosities in a proper direction. However, this will fade the very moment the creature first moves, and is altogether gone by the time they hit anything. The chained mangler squigs produce an impact which is nothing short of spectacular. The ideal end result, at least from the Night Goblin perspective, is that the creatures enrage each other whirling themselves into a perpetual tumbling motion. The beasts build a wild, unstoppable momentum of pure aggression, swirling chain and snapping jaw. Should the manglers actually hit an enemy, they will earn their name, sending severed body parts and splashes of gore everywhere, to the delight of any unlooking night goblin. Unsurprisingly, the mangler squigs are prone to a very high number of spectacular accidents such as choking each other with their chains, or pummeling each other repeatedly until they mash each other to a pulp. Finally for today, we have the Night Goblin Squig Hoppers. This is pretty much the Night Goblin version of cavalry. Since most squigs are not equipped with any kind of harness, a Night Goblin rider has to simply hold on for dear life. This provides a great amount of entertainment to many of his fellow squig riders. And although the incident eventually ends with both the squig and the rider skewered on top of a wickedly sharp stalagmite, the spectacle proves so impressive that it inspires other squig herders to do the same. And it is from this very practice that the tradition of squig riding was born, and the very first squig hoppers appeared. Due to their daring show of bravado in riding such a creature in battle, the squig hoppers are often held in high esteem within a tribe, making many young night goblins eager to join this dangerous but elite fighting force. In order for a night goblin to join the squig hoppers into battle, the night goblin has to first show his mettle by riding a cave squig himself. Such a task usually ends up killing the night goblin where upon being thrown from the back of the squig, the creature will instantly turn upon him and eat him. These tragedies occur so often that only one or two mobs of squig hoppers can be fielded at any given time. Even those that survive the encounter usually have little to no control of the direction or behavior of their mounts, 
In fact, the best a Night Goblin could do is to simply target a squig and hopefully lead it in the general direction of his enemy. When coaxed into battle, a mob of squig hoppers is considered extremely unpredictable, for they either have the brutal ability to devastate the enemy, or the unfortunate ability to destroy their own comrades in a crazy display of carnage and mayhem. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the squigs of Warhammer Fantasy for today. Now, there are more types of squigs than these, but the lore on them is not as expansive as the ones we described today. There's definitely a lot of similarity between Fantasy and 40k squigs, to the point where some are pretty interchangeable. They are still an important part of Greenskin's lore, so I cover them anyway. But what are your thoughts on the squigs mentioned today? Would you like to become a squig rider? Would you even consider them viable military units? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and have a healthy and awesome day. May Gork and Mork smash you on the head.